Let's move on to the drill press. The big advantage to the drill press is accuracy. We can set up a fence for repetitive procedures like drilling hinge locations, adjustable shelf pin holes. Another advantage to accuracy is the, the bit is always square to the table or whatever angle I set the table to be. So let's talk about some of the parts on the drill. Let's start off by the motor covers on top. You got your gears on the inside. Drills either work one of two ways. They either have a variable seat dial up front or they work kind of like a 10 speed bicycle with different gear configurations. You have your switch. One of the things if you're purchasing a drill you need to pay attention to is what they call the throat or the quill. This one has a four inch throat which allows it to drill through a block four inches thick. A bench top bottle will have less of a throat therefore only allowing you to drill through smaller blocks. Bigger drill presses, bigger throats. You have a chuck just like on the portable drills. You have a table. Here, the way you make the drill come down is what they call a feed lever. And I can actually control with some accuracy how far down I come into the, into the piece. This is called the depth gauge. On an older style drill, it may be a threaded rod with a bolt on there. You have in the back, you have a table lock. Unlock that and you have the height adjustment handle. So you can set it to the proper height. When you're always done, make sure you lock it back up. And the drill press is supported by a column which supports the head and the motor. So let's set up for doing a drill, uh, drilling a hole. First thing I want to do is make sure I've got the correct bit installed. We're drilling a half inch hole this time. It's centered in the chuck. I'm going to check my speed setting. And most of the time in our workshop, it's going to be set for woodworking. If you have one at home and you change the metal, the speed would differ. It would vary. Most of the time on your cover, there's a gauge or a chart on how to set it up for which RPMs. Setting the table height. How do we do that? Simply position your work and scrap. It's really important that on the drill press that you have a scrap piece because you've got a metal table to work with. So I'm going to unlock it, raise or lower to the appropriate height. I want about an inch, maybe an inch and a half, two inches at the most between my uh, bit and the piece I'm drilling into. Because remember, that's affected by the throat difference or the throat length. Okay. Now I'm going to set the depth. I'm going to remove my workpiece and I'm going to loosen the depth collar. So that's all loose. And when I bring this down, I'm going to bring it down to where it touches the scrap. Now, I don't want to lock it at that point because the bit has a point and it wouldn't draw all the way through. So I'm going to back it up to about a quarter to maybe three-eighths, half at the most. This will allow it to drill into the scrap piece but not into the metal table. So that's all. Our height and everything is set. Now it's time to secure the work. Which side of the table should I secure the work on? Or does it even matter? For safety reasons, I want to position the clamp on the handle side. Actually, the clamp can go anywhere. It's, that works out. But the majority of the piece you want to be on the left. If you'd happen to hit a hard knot or some sort of part of the board that it causes the drill to lock up, the head's not going to stop turning. What's going to move is the piece. So by being it over on the left side, it's going to spin and it's going to hit the column. Now. I'm not standing in the best position, but this is for video purposes, so I'm going to, if I was standing right here with the board on the right and it locked up, it would come around and hit me in the rib. So again, board positioning is something you need to consider. Just to prevent from locking up, or if it did lock up, we want to secure the work. This is for safety and it's for accuracy. And you want to make sure you use a decent clamp. Sometimes the quick grips just aren't strong enough to keep it from moving. So I shake this, I kind of shake the whole drill. All right, everything's set. Body position again. I'm going to use two hands on the feed lever. I'm going to stand on the right side so I'm away from the column. And standing on the side on this one's not, is okay. I mean, you can position yourself in front, but I, I like this position right here because it allows you to use two hands. You're going to feed it all in, all the way in, and you're going to unwind it. Don't just let go. That's hard on the throat. So go ahead and turn the switch on. Slowly feed it. You see, I'm using two hands. 
I'm drilling into oak, so I don't want to just ram it in there. I hit my depth stop, and now I'm going to unwind it. And as I kept it going as it, as it came out of the hole. Shut it off, wait for it to come to a complete stop. 